mom cuts my hair once. She grabs it in tufts and pincers at the ends of a flat silver blade. In the end, I look like a Lego figure. The historian John Strong writes that realizing the impermanence and impurity of the body was an activity undertaken by Buddhist monks and nuns. Six years later, I wail, wail at her in the same bathroom, bathroom. my hair rough, rough and coiled and swinging at my 12-year-old hips. My body is still rectangular and flat and yellow like a Lego's. Even today, Theravada monks at their ordination are supposed to contemplate the 32 parts of the body in meditation on the insubstantiality and impermanence of the self. My feet are molded with soft pills. I scream that I do not want to be replanted. The monks repeat, hair of the head, hair of the body, nails, teeth, skin. All of these things are actually dead matter. When we follow my father from Nevada to Texas, I tell her my life is over. I slice my hair off at the shoulders. Hairs, nails, teeth, even skin live, live only at their roots. The, the parts, parts that we see are dead. Boom. Wash, spray, curl. There is no logic in tending to a dead crop. Yet we cannot help but exist along these fibers. Between the ends of life and death. For better or worse, these strands are our <laughs> stories. When I was two years old, my four-year-old cousin Akil cut off a chunk of my hair. I don't, I don't remember, remember this happening, happening, but I can imagine him saying to me, Let's play barber. I'll do you first. And I can imagine myself <laughs> nodding, because I knew the difference between cutting off my hair, hair of the head, and cutting off an arm, hair of the body. And I knew which one would draw blood, mm -hmm. which one really mattered. Mm -hmm. But I still cried after he did it. And I would cry again after lopping off 12, 12 inches of hair in the sixth grade that took 12 years of my life to grow. It might, might as, as well have been, been an arm. arm. Hair of the head, hair of the body. He was an Air Force Academy student, a friend of a friend. His hand slid through my hair, fingers raining in the strength of my fiber, his lips curving to the shapes of his eyes. And the only words I can remember him saying, Your hair reminds me of my horses back home. <laughs> he was from Vermont, and he loved to ride. My long black hair became his stallion course. Heavy, he tread the path along my cheek and down my jaw thousands of times until it was his. And I cried for two hours about losing what had already been dead for years. Nails, teeth, skin. Year 10 left her at the boundary of warm and death. Her scalp is slashed and burned. That's what the cancer does. The doctor said. Chemo kept, kept her breathing, but took the life out, out of her. her. The hollows of her eyes blackened. She became woman unhooded, a spectacle. Mm -hmm. I wonder what my aunt thought as the locks on cake slipped down her body. Limp and lifeless, hair of the head. In the end, I looked like a Lego figure. Let's play barber. I'll do you first. Your hair reminds, reminds me of my, my horses back home. I scream. But I do not want to be replanted. That's, That's what, what the cancer, cancer does. does. The hand slid through my hair. Fingers, fingers raining in the strength of my fiber. She became woman unhooded. A spectacle. Oof. Hair, hair of the head. Hair, hair of the body. body. Nails. Teeth. Skin. We knew which one would draw blood. We knew. Which one? Really mattered. Mm -hmm.